Hello, my name is John Spangle. Welcome to my YouTube channel. As I always explain, I titled Underground, thinking about the underground church in present day China and Iran and other places where there's areas in the world that's it's just uh, very deadly even to be a Christian, study the Word of God. I know I look rough. It's it's late at night and I was in my studies and I'm getting ready to do some things tomorrow and dealing with this week with grandkids and stuff and setting some things up. I love at this, obviously, I'm all about pre-tribulation rapture on this channel. This is where it's gotten into. I believe this is where God's led me. And I make these videos, and I make as many as I can to get the word out. These videos are for instruction. Uh, they're not, uh, a lot of people say things. Matter of fact, I had someone comment uh, today on one of the videos and said I need to see a psychiatrist. And so I'm sure to anybody in this world, uh, that's all I talk about, and that's all that matters to me. Uh, because... The pre-tribulation rapture is imminent. Any moment, no specific sign for it. And the more I study, the more I get into it, uh, things are opened up, and, and I get understanding from God, and I see how things are. And a lot of times, yes, I, I go over things various times, repetitious, but I have so many people coming here new. They're not looking at all my videos. You know, I recommend take and look at the videos, look at some of the titles, go back and see the information I give. There's a lot there. There's a lot of people on YouTube that say, uh, uh, and other, you know, churches and stuff, and say that pre-tribulation rapture doctrine is only a couple of centuries years old, a couple hundred years old, started by Darby uh, in the 1800s. And that's totally proven to be wrong. That's a lie. But people don't research. And a lot of times God talked about the Israelites being, uh, some of them being damned because they didn't have the, the knowledge. They didn't. They didn't research and the knowledge for what they needed. And so uh, that's what I try to do here, and uh, get this information out to people. This is this is all it's about. Now, whether God calls us today, tomorrow, uh, sometime this year, next year, I don't know when. Uh, the more I study, I used to be one of the guys looking at date setting, trying to figure out clues, and I realized the more I studied, it opened things to me. I was glad I did that, but I come to understanding that there's it's a specific time no one knows and no one's going to guess it. Uh, and that's just the truth. And I know people, you know, I cannot be judgmental on people looking for these things, but I, as I under, have understanding, I tell people don't, don't bother looking for this stuff because you're not going to find it. You know, actually in a way you're going against what God says by looking. And I was the same way. You know, I was looking at high watch times. I did a video... September of last year about the Feast of Trumpets. So that's a high watch time, you know. And there's a lot of things that represents a uh, rapture of the church. But uh, it's, we're not going to get it. All right. No one's going to get it. I've done a video a while back. It's probably my most complete one about the raptures in the scripture. It's complete rapture doctrine in scriptures. And uh, there's 13 biblical raptures according to the scriptures. Uh, I kept saying 11 for a while, and I kept forgetting about Paul and John, and I always give a shout-out to Mr. Mann for helping me on that and reminding me of that. Uh, this YouTube channel is a learning experience for me. I'm learning as I go, and I'm doing, I've made mistakes, you know, and and, and I'm trying to get, uh, as a born-again Christian, you have the milk of the Scripture, and there's a growing phase, and later you get the meat of the Scripture, so you get better understanding. So even though I've been doing this, I'm, this has given me uh, understanding of things and how to uh, to be and uh, react to people. And, and it's almost to the point where I, I don't react too much to comments as much anymore as I used to because I have well over 4,000 comments. So anyways, I can't keep up. Uh, but there's been a lot of times because I thought people come here for a question or this and that, and I start answering questions, and all of a sudden they, they twist things around. <laughs> Excuse me. They're wanting to debate and... Uh, uh, cause trouble and strife. And so then I've realized that some of those, unfortunately, people come dishonestly to here. But not everybody. I, of course, there's a lot of people uh, that come here and get information, and that's what it's all about. Never take my word. I am just a simple man. I err. And so, but what I do is I show you scripture, what I'm looking at, and I go to different areas and I get what other people reports and different things from universities. I got a lot of different universities I look at. I get information from other pastors, and then I show what they write and things because I just want to get that information out there it just to get to people. And like I said, I've got, got many videos. I'm going to be making many more. I'm going to be making videos until God calls us up. 
and that's to bring more and more to God. You know, I stress a lot that the Left Behind series is misleading. I know why Tim Lahane did that, was to bring people excited into uh, the rapture of the church, but unfortunately I think it's misleading because a lot of people think that those that have heard the gospel are left behind and has a second chance, and they don't. There's a, a large group of people that will be saved, millions of people, the largest group of people saved in a revival in the history of the world. But realize there's over 12 million Jews on the face of this earth that are spiritually blinded. Their eyes will be opened up. And there's many Gentiles that have not heard the gospel yet. But I stress those people have heard the gospel. Uh, God sends strong delusion. If God sends delusion, you're not going to come out of that. So where would you think you would? And that's where I think some people err. You know, like I said, I can err on things. But I show 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12, where it talks about God will, after the church is raptured up, Antichrist is revealed, God will stand, send strong delusion for those that did not believe the uh, live, you know, love the truth, did not believe the love of the truth. Well, what's the love of the truth? It's the gospel. So they didn't want the gospel story. They want they love to live unrighteous. And so because of that, they're damned. And they're deluded. And they don't come out of that. And then I've had many people say, well, wait, there's a vast number in Revelation 7. Absolutely. I agree 100% with you. That's, like I said, those Gentiles have not heard the gospel. And there's millions of Jews that have opportunity. God will deal with them. Um, uh, I had someone accuse me a while back. You're doing that replacement theory the way you're talking. You're placing the, the church with Israel with the church. No, I'm not. God's dealing with, with the church right now. We're at the end of the church age. And then he's going to bring uh, the others. He's going to deal with the others. Uh, like I read all the time. You, a lot of people hear me read all the time. The end of the church age. The church is not purified brain during the seven-year tribulation. Jesus' people are. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression, and to make any sins, and to make reconciliation of iniquity for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. The church is purified solely by the complete work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We are expected to be working for the kingdom of God. As I said, as you get that meat of the scripture, you come to understanding in your relationship with God, and you get you get to know what talent it is that you're to be doing, and you do that for God's kingdom and build the kingdom. Uh, to become saved, admit you're a sinner, and that's Romans 3.28. I believe Jesus died and rose again to pay for your sins, Romans 5, 8. Confess Jesus Lord of your life, putting your total trust in Jesus as your only hope of salvation, Romans 10, 9. A lot of people admit they're a sinner and they believe what Jesus Christ did, but they don't they don't add the confession on there where they make God God of their life. In other words, they don't submit. That's something against the flesh. I'm, I'm a retired military. I, I spent 21 years in the military, two branches of service. I was in the Air Force eight years full time, and then I did 13 years Army National Guard. During Air Force, I was in Operation uh, Operation Desert Storm, and then during uh, the Guards, I was in Operation Enduring Freedom. And I was the last time I went to war, I spent 16 months in combat zone. My point is this: uh, God is God of my life. He brought me out of many things, and and I've seen so many things opened up to me. I've I've seen so much, and that's why I do these videos to be obedient to God because. God's everything. But my point is, as a soldier, you don't like to submit. I mean, you do, and you're ranking things, but I mean, as for uh, with your enemy, you, you fight till you, you can't breathe. You know, there's no life in you. And so, uh, there's been many times we've been out, way outnumbered. God brought us out of so many times, it's, it's unreal. Area we were at, and security, and different things we did against large numbers. And it's all because of God. It could have been worse. We could have been overrun. I mean, I, so many times, I've got so many stories uh, how God brought me personally out of things. And at times, I have to deal with things. I have to deal with guilt. I have, I'm like, why? I'm no special. I'm no better than that man there or that woman there. You know, I'm no one special. But God has a reason and purpose for everything. He, ha he deals with people in his own way. And it could be because I've been doing these videos now, especially the last eight months. 
Uh, I've been doing it for four years, but I mean, really eight months I've been talking about pre-tribulation rapture of the church. It's just that that drive is there for me to just keep doing this and keep doing it and put it out there and put it out there. Now, I know a lot of people are like, we've been hearing this for centuries. So it's not where the Lord tarries. He's, he's bringing one more in. So that's, that's what it's all about. I don't I don't have a problem with that. Because when when you're born again, you look at things different. The world does not understand. Uh, a person, the Bible, the issue I have with people is, uh, I'm born in America, so I'm American. Here in this country, a lot of people, uh, they, they, they read the Bible with the Western mindset. They don't understand the culture because they don't study the culture. They don't take the time. If you study the culture, Middle Eastern culture, because the Bible is Middle Eastern and it's not Western. And if you understand the culture, it gives you better understanding. But then again, you're still limited. It's becoming born again Christian. You learn and study enough to get that where it brings you to God and you, you become saved, truly saved, and make God God of your life. Then you're spending your days, your times. I mean, right now it's, uh, no, I'm not spent, but it's 9.53 at night. So it'll probably be another hour before I get this set up. I don't know how long it'll take. I'm just playing this by ear and throwing. I got a report here I'm going to read from uh, Liberty University. Uh, I've done a lot from that university. I've, there's like about 30 different reports <laughs> about pre-tribulation rapture there because they have a pre-tribulation rapture center there. And then there's a, there's another Bible college I, I've had. i got five reports ready to do off of. And then there's, I think, I, I don't want to be wrong because my memory's not that great anymore. So um, I think it's way of, way of life, way of literature. I'm sorry, I, I don't have it marked down in front of me in notes or I remember it. Uh, it's saved on a computer. And then I have a different one that's a pre-tribulation rapture type center where it has well over 30 reports from many different pastors. Uh, so I have a lot of this different stuff, that a lot of information I love. And like I said, that's why I like to read these things to you and give this information out to you. Because like I said, you know, a lot of people would lie and say, well, rapture is just a new thing. Well, they don't go back and, and study. And one thing you look at I, and say it's quick, quick way to debunk that. It's 431 A.D., the Council of Ephesus. I've said it many times on my videos. Catholic Church got together, and what did, was the main purpose of that? To outlaw pre-tribulation rapture because it was being taught or understood as the embassy of the rapture of the church for over 400 years. And so, and you can back this up. You know, if I say something in front of you that I cannot back up, then I am the foolish man. Now, those people out there that say uh, that they're, you know, pre-tribulation rapture is only cut up 100 years old, they're the ones that are being foolish because... If you're not lazy, you can look and find the answer. And I stress that so much. As Christians, we are not to be lazy. I had someone comment one time, well, Christians lazy, that don't mean lazy, that don't mean nothing. You still go to heaven. No, because if you're truly born again, you're working. You see what I'm saying? You're going to have the desire to study, to grow, and you're going to progress. You don't stay, you don't stagnate. Uh, lukewarm. I was just watching a, a video not too long ago. I listened to one of the people I listened to is uh, Pastor JD Frog. Frog? If I say that right, I'm going to say Farag, but it's Farag over in Hawaii. I would love to talk to that man and, and go to his church. Uh, I don't always agree with him on everything. That's the way I look. I'm very critical on some things, but uh, for a lot of things I, I, I do like. And uh, he talks about uh, uh, pre-tribulation rapture all the time and has his his uh, weekly uh, things and study. And I get into it, and, and, and that's what I like to do. And I, lost, I was going to make a point about J.D., and it's just right there at the tip of my, it's late at night. So uh, it's right there, but I'm missing it. And I regret doing, I, I missed that on that. Uh, that's that's the thing is I have to, but my notes, I have to have everything written down. I have PTSD, some other problems. And so dealing with health issues all the time. God's brought me through. I had a lot of problems with my kidneys. Uh, just a few months ago, I had four kidney surgeries. Now they seem to be doing good. Now I've got uh, my back, because I had degenerative disc disease for Real bad, you know, anybody else has that, you know, it's, it gets to the point where it gets bad and I can't even stand up straight, obviously, even though I tried to exercise to do that, keep my back straight. And uh, I'm so bad pinched right now, I got a lot of pains from the shoulder on down and I can't feel two of my fingers. And so, so that's bad right now. I'm trying to get the VA, get that taken care of. And if I do some more physical therapy in the past, that seems to work. Uh, I don't want to take all the big drugs that they want me to do, uh, things like that. And I've had people, and yes, I, I suppose take a, uh, I take a lot with God, but I'm, I'm in God's word so much. 
I don't like taking the, the psychological drugs that they want me to do uh, because of PTSD. I do have anger issues. I seem to control things better. I have a Wing Chun dummy in the other room that I use, and so I beat up on. And uh, have things I have to deal with. Now I've had people come here and say that's a crazy guy and say things about me, and because they don't like what I, I talk about here, so they they then I'm talking about others that's supposed to be brothers in Christ. I had one attack my channel so much a few months ago. He got what he wanted. He got about 35 people to subscribe here or leave. And so I've had some people email me, and I told them if you want to go, go. And so, uh, not in a bad way. And I'm not going to hold back. This is about God. I don't ask. That's why I don't ask for subscribers. I want this all about God. And uh, so I leave it to him. You know, I, like I said, I'm always trying to get one person. I started this four years ago to give a testimony in my life and how God's helping me. And, and that's the important thing to me. I'm not very charismatic. Uh, I, I don't downgrade, let myself down. That's for my, oh my cats. I don't do that to be putting myself down. What I do that is to show that even God can use someone as simple as me to get the word out and get people interested in studying and things like that. That's very important. God does not, if you look at all, all things throughout life, everybody sins and, and they make mistakes. I mean, look at King David. You know, he talks about he was a man out of his own heart. Yet King David had an affair, got a woman pregnant, Bathsheba. Then had her husband killed because he wanted her to lie with, to, to hide the, the pregnancy, and he wouldn't do it. At, and when he came to visit and give a report from the battlefield, he wouldn't lie with his wife because he respected. He was a good captain. He respected his men, and he was going to bet his wife while he, you know, while his men are at war. He didn't didn't feel like he could do that. He didn't even sleep in the house with her. He slept out the house. And so when David found out, he had him killed. Now later uh, was a Samuel that. Uh, told David the story about the lamb. And when David said, get after that person that hurt that lamb, and he said, well, the story's about you. And so he had to pay for his sin. Did God forgive him? Yes. He had remorse. God forgave him. But someone had to pay for that sin. Well, that first child died. A lot of people don't realize uh, Solomon, uh, the son by David and Bathsheba, was our second child. The first child died. And so, so he committed adultery. He committed murder to hide it. It was his rule. You know, he gave the order to have that man killed. So he committed murder. And yet God forgave him. You can be forgiven for anything. Uh, there, there's there's a lot of people out there trying to say things that you cannot be forgiven. Look at uh, Peter. He denied Christ three times. But Peter was forgiven. He realized what he'd done wrong. Uh, but you have to be careful. Uh, you know, I've been always raised with a partable sin. Uh, then partable sin, you'll go to hell over part of sin. Then I keep looking and studying, and I, I disagree because uh, the only thing that a partable sin was denying Jesus Christ. Well, of course you're not going to go to heaven because you deny the gospel. Uh, but, there, I mean, you're denying Christ. It'd be the unpartable sin. And I know some people may come up and say, well, you're wrong. That's that's just the way I'm looking at it right now. Uh for example, someone who teaches against pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. Now you're going to say, wait a minute, John. I'm sorry, my sinuses are always bad, especially at night. Like, wait a minute, John. What are you talking about? It doesn't matter. We're brothers in Christ. It, doctrine doesn't matter. It's okay if you're wrong. But look, once you get that milk of the scripture, you're going to make mistakes. That's, you're a child in God. We're, I'm a child in God anyways. But you're going to learn. So there's going to be mistakes. That's allowed. That time of ignorance. You're learning. But when you become mature, then you're not to listen to men's teachings. Pre-wrath, mid-tribulation, and post-tribulation of the rapture of the church are all men's teachings. Pre-tribulation rapture is what Jesus Christ himself taught. He taught it in six parables. The six parables, as Patches is hollering at me, it's time to go to bed. I can tell it's late at night. As soon as I make this video, he'll, we'll go to bed. He'll, he sleeps on my chest. Uh, the parables that have pre-tribulation rapture theme in them. Parable of the Ten Virgins, Matthew 25, 1 through 13. The Parable of Talents, Matthew 25, 14 through 30. The Parable of the Marriage Feast, Matthew 22, 1 through 14. The Parable of Testing of Servants, Luke 12, 42 through 48. The Parable of the Great Supper, Luke 14, 16 through 24. 
The parable of the long journey, Luke 19, 11 through 27. Fourteen times Jesus Christ warned us to be waiting for what? The pre-tribulation rapture. It's imminent. Matthew 24, verse 36. Matthew 24, verse 39. Matthew 24, verse 42. Matthew 24, verse 44. Matthew 24, verse 50. Matthew 25, 13. Mark 13, 32. Mark 13, 33. Mark 13, 35. Mark 13, 37. Luke 12, 40, Luke 21, 34, and Luke 21, 36. All give the warning, uh, to be watchful. Luke 12, 35 through 40. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning, and eat yourselves like unto men that wait for the Lord when he will return from the wedding. Then when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if you shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, or find them so blessed are those servants. And this know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Jesus also warned in Luke 21, 34-36, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeitus, surfeiting and directness and cares of this world life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always, that ye may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. So a lot of times, you know, I've had people say, well, that's escapism. You're you're not standing up. You're you're not ready. For, you're not preparing people for the tribulation. Uh, we live in persecution and tribulation. The church has always been that way. And once a person becomes a born-again Christian, you're going to have attacks. There are going to be spiritual attacks. There is no, well, you're not, no, you will. Satan's angry. You, you belong to God now. And he's angry. He can't, you're not his. So what's he going to do? Is he going to make your life happy? He's going to make your life happy. That's where a lot of these churches, they do the prosperity teachings. There's heresy. They're like, you know, you promise sow a seed. You're going to have all kinds of money and stuff. No, you're not. N not once have God promised, Jesus Christ said, here on earth that you will. Matter of fact, it's the complete opposite. He says you'll be for go through persecution and tribulation. He warned that. Uh, a lot of times when I talk about these, these parables, I've had people come up and say, well, you're talking parables. Uh, it's not to know things. People are not to know these things. Well, some things are taught before. He talked to the apostles, but we said the apostle affects the church today. Uh, Matthew 24, verses 36 through 51. He talks about the first uh, verses, 1 through 35. He talks about the, the seven-year tribulation. He talks about second coming. He talks about the rapture at, at the end of his second coming. Yes, there's a, more than one rapture. I told you there's 13. We're looking at four more raptures. The next rapture in the timeline we know before the seven-year tribulation, sometime is the church age. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be next week. Uh, next month, this year, next year, or year after, or when it, I don't know when it's going to be. No one does. But we see signs of the seven year tribulation, so we know the rapture is going to, the church is going to take place before. That we do know. And then there's going to be a rapture of the two witnesses. Revelation 11, 3 through 12. The light dead in the street, three and a half days, be brought back to life and come up hither. And then at the end of the seven year tribulation, as we come down, that's, uh, I'm looking at my notes here and trying to say it's uh, Revelation 19, 7 through 16. talks about the wedding feast in heaven. Christ coming down a second coming, followed by his army. And what are, what are they wearing? The same thing we wore at the wedding feast. A great dis detailed description. That's what the Bible is, very detailed. And we come down. And as we're coming down, this, the altar, uh, the souls out of the, uh, from underneath the altar comes out of the martyred saints that martyred during the seven-year tribulation. The, their bodies will come up get as we're coming down. We'll get their um, glorified bodies, and as we touch down, you see they're not they're not separate from us. They don't go a wedding feast, so they weren't that. You know, what I'm saying we had the wedding feast. Excuse me, I apologize for my sinuses. That's Revelation 14, 14, 16, and when we touch down, all in Armageddon. Revelation 14, 17 through 20. Everybody comes to Armageddon for uh, judgment. Also, at the end. In Matthew 24, off of Discord, when it talks about Jesus' second coming, he says, the angel's going out collecting this elect. That's bringing everybody to Armageddon. Things like that's happened before. There's been many types of raptures. 
for prime example, I'd like to use about that's Philip Acts chapter 8, verse 26 through 40. Since Philip baptized the Ethiopian official, he was caught up in spirit, taking one place to another. He's taken to Astos, A Z O T U S, where he started preaching the word. So as soon as he baptized the Ethiopian official, official, he was taken up, raptured over there. And the Ethiopian official, you know, started celebrating. What a witnessing tool, you know. I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Lord, and all of a sudden I disappear. You know, it just, it's, it's great. And so we see these things, and uh, now they go. Now, the reason I do this is because to show different things, what other people put out there, and that's very good, and, and they're, they're more in the Word of God, very godly men than me, and that's why I like to use. And these men know a lot. I know a lot of, uh, like I use a lot about uh, Thomas Ice, Dr. Thomas Ice from Liberty University, and others, and like I said, there's uh, three or four different universities I use. I just can't remember because I have this one in front of me. I don't have the notes on the others, but uh, that I get this information from. And we study. I also look at different things. Like Ken Johnson is a very godly man. He has a lot of books out there. I recommend buying his books. He talks about the, uh, I'm trying to see which one I got there, but I came to the lighting and stuff. It's the, the Mysteries of the Essenes, the Ken Johnson collection. Um, he talks about Dead Sea Scrolls because he studied them and got into that. And he talks about the Essenes because 200 AD, the Essenes had the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. And in Dead Sea Scrolls, there's literature about pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. It was taught. It's always been taught. Okay? And it's always been taught. It's imminent. And even those that uh, in the church, early church fathers who got away from on some heretical things in their teachings, they still talked about the embassy and wrote about the embassy of the rapture of the church. And so... There's a lot there in the information there, and that's why I try to give to you. This is titled Kept from the Hour. And uh, it's because you have kept the word of my prayer for severance, I will I also will keep you from the hour of testing. The hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell upon the earth. Revelation 3:10. Critics of the pre tube rapture, rapture position often say that we cannot produce one single passage that teaches our position. I believe that Revelation 3.10 is a verse which answers their challenge. Of course, they neglect the fact that they cannot produce one single passage teaching their view either. By means, there is no passage proving that the rapture of the church happens but pre-tribulation rapture. I believe that Revelation 3.10 is a verse teaching the church's promised exemption from the seven-year tribulation period, thus supporting the pre-tribulation rapture. In addition, post tribulators cannot produce one verse supporting their assumption that the church will enter and pass through the tribulation. We all agree that the believers will be numerous throughout the seven-year period of God's wrath, but pre tribulators believe they will be, not be the church. Therefore, the post trib position is just as much, even more so, a position based on theological assumptions and arguments as they charge pre tribulators of being. It's always like that. You have someone accuse you, of, and they're doing the same thing. Look at the politics here in America. And I'm not for either side. I'm at this point now where I I, I see so much bad and so much evil. Uh, God's in control. But I don't look at anybody saving America. And I know a lot of Christian people out there are like, well, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. Donald Trump's a great deceiver. If you research and look back, I recommend looking back. I need to write that down. I apologize. Look back at his VP's pick, uh, his backing because he's big into uh, this one group that works with the defense uh, Pentagon, and they deal with surveillance. All right, Donald Trump's about the 5G technology. And I've warned many people about that. That's the technology and farther that the Antichrist uses. And he won't go up and say, I was wrong, because a lot of people, when they got this, it took their life. I would say it, but I've had five videos taken off so far, YouTube, of what I've said. So I have to be careful what I say. Even though I think he could talk about it now, I, I don't know. But he did his quick, you know, warp speed and got that stuff out. He's influenced by what people tell him. I don't hold that against him. But we know now that causes a lot. And a lot of people are still dying from that. And I had personal friends. I've not had one friend that didn't get that, got sick, and made it through, myself included. But it, I know five friends that got that. And I think a week in their body, they died because of it. Don't get me started. I, I, I've done a lot of research into that from a doctor from over in Israel and what he says about stuff. 
You have to do your own research. Keep out. The Greek phrase tero ik, keep out, refers to be, appears to be used as a play on kept my word in 3.8 and kept the word earlier in 3.10. That is to say, because you have kept or obeyed my words during the present church age, I will keep you from the time of another testing, tribulation. The current time of testing church age is a time in which the church is being tested through trials to ver verify her metal and determine one's place of rule and coming kingdom. Revelation 2, 26 through 27, and Revelation 3, 21. This accounts for the reason why our Lord uses the phrase terra eek, T E R E O eek. It is a play on words where the dead is rewarded in kind, because you, then I will. <clears throat> when we consider possible options that could have been used, we see that terra eek is the best possible option if our Lord wanted to make a statement that would exclude the church from tribulation. Only the phrase terra eek will convey the absolute protection of the church from the hour of testing by keeping them out from this time. Charles Rury notes the promise of Revelation 3.10 not only guarantees being kept from tribulation trials, but the tribulation period itself. The promise is not, I will keep you from the trials. It is, I will keep you from the hour of trials. The verb terra, T-R-E-A-E-O, means keep. That's the basic meaning of keeping something as it is. It is found 70 times in the Greek New Testament and 36 of those in the writings of John. He used the word 11 times in Revelation, which indicates that the term is he favors when the, uh, compared to the other New Testament writers. This is clear when we took the, we look at the leading Greek lexicon that breaks New Testament passage in the following three nuances. One, to retain in custody, keep watch, over guard. Two, to cause a state condition or activity, continue, keep hold, reserve, preserve. And three, to persist in obedience, keep, observe, fulfill, pay attention to. The lexicon cites Revelation 3.10 as a following under the second definition. Thus it conveys the notion of keeping or preserving one from entering into something else. In the context, it is the hour of testing. The preposition teaming up the terra eek out of, which produces the opposite thought, keep out. John uses eek, eek, significantly more than does any other New Testament writer. John Townsend after an extensive study of the use of Eek in Greek, including the New Testament, concludes the following. Understand, the reason we put these things out, the Bible was not written in English. I get so many people arguing with me and saying, well, rapture is not in the Bible. They try to be smart and show how foolish they are. Uh, the Bible was written in Cone Greek, and then later was Classic Greek. So you had the word harpazo. And then you have all these other references of Eek and Terra Eek and all that used in certain scriptures. Later, uh, and when it's a Latin, where we get the word rapturo, rapturo, and later into English, you have uh, Old English, early, uh, Middle Eng early English, Middle English, and Modern English. You have four forms to English. And so uh, it was rapt, R-A-P-T, and later rapture. So in the writings, in the early writings, in the 18, uh, before the 1800s, it would be R-A-P-T, then around 1800, 17, 1800, you get the word rapture when they discuss things or in the writings, authors about the Bible. So understanding the Greek gives you better understanding of everything. Just like in the Old Testament, you need to look at Hebrew. Hebrew opens up things to you. There's a couple of phrases in Aramaic. I think the book of Ruth was written in Aramaic, but everything else was written in Hebrew. The study of Eek throughout its ling linguist history especially in its usage in the New Testament, has shown that the preposition may sometimes indicate outside position, whereas at other times it means removal out from within. In Revelation to the interpretation of Terra Eek in Revelation 3.10, this is finding establishments that the pre-tribulation position at bona fide grammatical possibility. To understand Terra Eek as indicating preservation in an outside position is well within the bounds of ling linguist history and uses of Eek. The phrase terraic is used one other place in John's New Testament writings, which is John 17, 15. I do not ask thee to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. Even though the first half of the verse says Christ will not take believers out of the world, the second half says that they will be totally protected from the evil one, Satan. The meaning of terraic is that Christ is praying that his disciples would be kept away from and out of the power of the evil one, and it's not implying that the evil one once had power over them, which is a self-evident truth. John notes John's sprawl. Such a statement by our Lord is in concert with what John says in Revelation 3.10. The hour of testing. 
Now that we, the believers, will be kept from something, we need to know what it is that we will be preserved from. The text says the hour of testing, the hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. The hour of time of testing is what we will be kept from. Further, the hour of testing is said to be something that will in the future come upon the whole world. Thus it is clear that it's not something that happened in the last days, happened in the days of the early church, since no one knows of a global testing came upon the whole earth in the first century. To cut to chase, John speaks of it in this passage in his the tribulation period, which is clearly a time in which the Lord will test the earth dwellers, always persistent unbelievers throughout Revelation, and not church age believers. The phrase earth dwellers is used eleven times in nine verses in Revelation three ten. 6.10, 8.13, 11.10, 2 times in 13.8, 13.12, uh, 13.14, 2 times in 14.6, 17.8. As you examine each individual use except 3.10, you will see that I'll refer to a special class of stubborn sinners who are set in their rebellion against the God of heaven. You will also find that the phrase is only used to refer to those during the tribulation period. Therefore, the, the future hour spoken of by in 13.10 is set in contrast with the present set of believers in the church age and the future earth dwellers will be active during the time period in which the believers are said to be kept from it. It is clear that John speaks of the time of or hour of the tribulation. This is why 3.10 is a clear promise that Christ will keep believers from the time of the seven year tribulation. I'm almost done. I'm about to get to Pat. He's hollering for me for bed. The Philadelphia Promise. The promise of Revelation 3.10 is a universal promise that is applicable to all the churches, which it says in 3.13. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. See also 2.7, 2.11, 2.17, 2.29, 3.6, and 3.22. While our Lord's promise in 3.10 is this to the Philadelphia church, it's also a promise to the universal church as well. The same is true, for example, in the book of Colossians, when Christ tells them in 3.1 to keep the, seeking the things above or to set you mind on things above, not on things that are on earth. 3 2. It is true that the epistle was written historically to the Colossian believers, Colossian believers, and there are no passages that specifically say they are universal passages of all believers, but what Christian does not take them to be universal all th believers throughout the church age. It's only Philadelphia and only those alive at the time of writing to hold fast what you have in order that no one take your crown since Christ is coming quickly. 3 11. It's only filled after you receive the name of the God, the name of the God city, and the new name of the Lord's coming, 311. Or will all believers benefit from all the promises made to the seven churches? Certainly these promises made to first century Philadelphia believers are universal for their whole church. Therefore, 310 is a promise to the universal church. It's rare indeed for a post tribute to try to argue this point. They rather argue against other points knowing that this issue is clear. Conclusion. And then I can go take patch to bed. What does this mean? John Townsend summarizes as follows. Revelation 3.10 may then be paraphrased because you have held fast the word which tells of my perseverance. I also preserve you in a position outside the hour of testing. This paraphrase points up an important nuisance of the meaning that must be recognized. Tired ache in Revelation 3.10 does not describe the rapture as such. Instead, it describes the position and status of the church during the hour of testing. It describes the results of the rapture, not the rapture itself. Revelation 3.10 does not state directly how the church will be preserved outside the hour of testing. However, the remainder of the verse indicates that the proper logical deduction is preservation by means of pre-tribulation pre rapture of the church. Mar Mar Maranatha. So, as my little buddy is out there, out that door, scratching and hollering for me to get take him to bed, uh, yes, we, as a matter of fact, my daughter, daughter came over the other day and I was having an argument with my cat. Uh, Patches was wanting me to do something, and I was fixing supper at the time for me and Jacob. And he kept arguing and tapping my leg. And what it was is he wanted me to follow him in there and while he ate his supper. <laughs> our pets are our children, and he's rotten. He was asleep. That's why I started it. I was trying to have him in here because it's not a quick video. I mean, it's a quick video. Um, but there you have it. Uh, a lot of times people try to... Uh, take away they want to take away from God and there's a lot of people that use the scripture and try to take away from God but we're just waiting like these last moments here and this is to open your eyes and to get you study and look at more I recommend uh, to study God's word and to uh, to look at it there's many raptures as I said 
as I noted, there's only four left. Rapture of the church, rapture of the two witnesses, the rapture of the martyred saints, and the rapture when we hit when we touch down in Armageddon to bring everybody to Armageddon. Uh, so I mean, there's two people that were raptured and never faced death, and that was uh, uh, Enoch. And I'm trying to remember. I'm looking at my notes. Remember exactly when uh, that happened. That was Enoch and then uh, Elijah. And if I look down here, because my, my brain, as many times I talk about it, you think I remember. Enoch, Genesis chapter 5, verse 21 through 24, and Hebrews 11, 5. Talk about Enoch being uh, raptured, and Elijah 2 Kings 2, 11. Uh, now, I understand that, you know, the two witnesses, everybody say it's Elijah and Moses. And a lot of people think it is, because the disciples saw the Mount Transformation, and when uh, Jesus talked to Elijah and Moses. But Eli and Moses died. God took him. He wasn't raptured. He, he was. He died. He buried him. So Enoch and Elijah did not. Elijah was a prophet for Israel. Enoch was a prophet for everybody, Gentiles, everybody. So what's the two witnesses doing? They're prophesying there for two groups. They're prophesying for the Jewish people. But they're also prophesying because when they die, it's the end of, end of the Gentiles. So we're looking at the end of the church age. So at that point, end of Gentiles. What would that mean? That would be there's no more Gentiles beyond that point that would come to knowing they've had their opportunity, whether they are or not at that point. Uh, most of them will be martyred. And then you have the whole seven years for the Jewish people. And so uh, that's why I believe it could be Enoch and Elijah. I could be wrong. It could be Elijah and Moses. But I, I'm looking at that because, like I said, uh, Moses had died before. We'll see. We'll come to know things. God's going to show us many things. Time is short. And my cat's in the other room saying, Dad, let's go to bed. So we're about to. And so uh, it's not going to go to bed. And uh, <laughs> see, it sounds like it's saying now, I'm telling you. Uh, but I want to put this out real quick. And while I'm uploading this, I'll let him in here. And he'll be sitting in my lap, playing around, knocking stuff over until uh, this is loaded. And then we go to bed. God bless you. Thank you. I look forward to uh, making more videos, talking more about God until uh, that time. Oh, I'm hearing him coming in there. He's coming in here. He got the door open. Hey, buddy. There he is. Yeah, it's a blessing. What are you doing? This, this is my buddy. He's ready to go to bed. He's saying, Dad, yes. Yes. You ready to go to bed? You tired? You tired? Huh? You're a blessing from God. Animals are a blessing from God. They are. And people are cruel to animals. It's just under, you can't understand how people can be cruel to animals. Uh, we are judged by how we treat our animals. And yes, I do believe our pets will be with us in heaven. And he knows when I'm not well. When I had cancer and I had chemo, he would lay here and put a paw on either side of my neck and give me hugs all the time. And I lay there for hours uh, because I was just in bed. I couldn't hardly move uh, when I had my cancer. I was taking five different chemos at the time after I did chemo and radiation treatments and then had the surgeries. And they had to give me my body to heal for two or three months before they put more poison in me. And so he was there for me. So he's a, he's a blessing. He's letting me know it's time to go to bed. So <laughs> we'll go. We'll go. God bless you. Thank you. I look forward to uh, meeting you in heaven. I really do. And I pray. And I pray every time for everybody comes here. So they're on my prayer list automatically. You know, there's people come here I don't even know. But they're on my prayer list. And so, uh, yeah. God bless you. Thank you.